Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another Prophecy in the News Daily Update with today's guest, Doug Hamp, author and lecturer. And by the way, we're going to talk about uh, one of his DVDs. Very interesting. If you're interested at all in Bible prophecy, you'll be interested in the fall feasts and the budding of the fig tree. Doug Hamp, good to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. You know, we think about prophecy a lot, and, and there's a lot of discussion about prophecy, but when you talk about the fig tree, it's very plain, very clear, and it tells a great message for the last days. It really does, and it answers a lot of questions. You know, in Acts chapter 1, the disciples ask, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom? And he says, it's not for you to know the times and the seasons. But that's kind of weird when you go back to Matthew 24, they ask a very similar question. Lord, tell us what will be the sign of the end of the age and of your coming. And then he gives us whole list of things to look for. You're going to have natural disasters, earthquakes, wars and rumors of mm -hmm. wars, etc. And then he gets to, toward the end of the chapter, he says, learn the parable of the fig tree. And it's the fig tree that's going to unlock the passage for us in Acts chapter 1. Because he says, learn the parable of the fig tree. When you see its branch put, fo put forth leaves and become tender, you know that summer is near, even at the doors. So I say to you, this generation shall no means pass away till all these things take place. So what they were asking in, in Acts had already been answered for them in the book of Matthew 24 on mm. the Olivet Discourse. So what we have to do is say, all right, what is the parable of the fig tree? That will answer the question. So we go back and we look at how the fig tree was representative of Israel. We see it clearly in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself carried forward that representation when he talks about a, a landowner having a, a vineyard and in his vineyard he has a fig tree. He comes looking for fruit on it for three years. That's a very interesting number, isn't mm -hmm. it? You it know, is. there Jesus was going around for three and a half years uh, teaching, etc., throughout Israel. And, and certainly many of the masses believed in the Lord Jesus, but the leadership itself, by and large, rejected Jesus. So you have this fig tree. And then we have, of course, when Jesus comes back from staying at Mary, Martha, and Lazarus' house, he's coming up to Jerusalem. He sees a fig tree on the side of the road. And what does he do? He curses it because there's no fruit on it. Mm -hmm. Well, I was in uh, revisiting Israel a couple years ago. I lived in Israel for three years, incidentally, but then I revisited and I, I was checking out the fig trees. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed is that there's fruit on a fig tree even when it's not in season. Mm. It's dried up fruit. You may not want to eat it, but there's still fruit on it. It's evidence that that is a fruitful tree. So here's a tree that Jesus would have seen on every occasion that he, he came up to Jerusalem. Remember that where Mary, Martha, and Lazarus lived was on the route from Jericho up to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So he would have passed by this tree a number of times. He would have seen it many, on many occasions. It wasn't just that he suddenly randomly saw a tree and cursed mm -hmm. it. Yeah. He, he knew this tree, and he knew that it was an unfruitful tree. So he curses it. And then we come back to the parable of the fig tree. So he says... He, he's, you know, he, he's, well, first of all, he curses the tree, let no fruit ever grow on you again. Then we come back to the parable of the fig tree, learn the parable of the fig tree. So what are the disciples thinking? They're like, wow, we need to learn this parable. We know about the stuff in the Hebrew scriptures. Mm -hmm. We know about Jesus' uh, parable of the landowner with the fig tree. And then we saw Jesus curse the fig tree. Wow, this is very interesting. Then the fig tree is cut down, so to speak, in mm -hmm. 70 AD, then once again in 132 AD under the Bar Kokhva revolt, revolt, and then it doesn't bud until 1948. That becomes a very significant year. So and it's it, sending forth its little green sprouts. It really is. In 1948. Yeah. And you know what's really interesting about this is it was in 1947 that the United Nations voted to make Israel a nation. What else happened in 1947? Well, we have the, the crash in Roswell, New Mexico. And I think that there's actually a connection because Satan, who is you know, also taking notes, yeah. he says, aha, Israel has come back into the land, or they're going to pretty soon. I better get started with my deception because I have only about a generation left. And a generation is 70 or 80 years. Mm -hmm. 
So he knows that his time is short, and I think that it was no accident that we have yeah. this whole alien stuff happening. You know, that's something that I've been interested in for some time, the fact that I noted a long time ago that every time something major happens in the life of, of the nation Israel, there is a huge uh, increase in UFO activity. Right. Uh, one of the biggest UFO waves in history was in 1967, right at the time of the Six-Day War. Mm -hmm. There was another one in 1973, and, uh -huh. and back in the 50s, uh, at the time of Israel's wars, there were these UFO activities. So I think you and I agree that UFO activity is satanic in nature. Absolutely. And, and what was happening when Jesus was on the earth? There was huge demonic activity yeah, going on. that's right. Uh, which we don't hear about before. We don't so much hear about after. But when he was on the earth, I mean, the demons were just all over the place. And again, it's no accident. So yeah, as, as we get closer to the Lord's return, I think we're seeing a re, uh, uh, an increase in the satanic activity. Mm -hmm. But you know, the whole fig tree thing, I, I think is a real, uh, uh, um, it's just a real answer to what the disciples ask in Acts. Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He says, it's not for you to know. Why does he say that? Because look guys, I already gave you the key to unlock the question. Learn the parable of the fig tree. It, it, it's, it's very central. We have to learn the parable of the fig tree and then it begins to make sense and we see that we're very, very close. Well, I wish we had another hour to talk about all this, but this DVD that Doug has produced, The Fall Feast of Israel and the Budding of the Fig Tree, combines many uh, of the topics we just barely touched upon, including signs in the heavens, including uh, the lifetime of a man at 70 years. Uh, it, this has some ideas concerning the timing of the tribulation. It's very, very interesting. If you're at all interested in Bible prophecy, call the 800 number on your screen, and you'll get this DVD for 1995 plus shipping and handling, but we have a free bonus. Uh, for your personal computer a software uh, disk, you can load this uh, into your computer. It's the Word, and it's one of the best Bible study programs I've ever seen. Yours absolutely free. Doug, that, uh, you use this uh, Word Bible study program yourself, don't you? I, I do. I use it exclusively. I, I've uh, looked at the other softwares. I've uh, used them on occasion, and I just think the Word is a wonderful tool. Just because it's free, don't let the price fool you. Yeah. Uh, in this case, you don't get what you pay for. You actually get a tremendous software. The creator of the software, Costa Stereo, has put in over 13,000 hours developing this software. So it's, it's, it's uh, first class, and uh, the resources are wonderful that accompany the software, all on that CD. Now, in the minute or so remaining, uh, on your DVD, you go into uh, Israel's uh, existence across the time from 90, 1948 to the present and into the uh, immediate future, uh, comparing the life of Israel with the lifetime of a human being as given in the Bible. And that, that's very interesting to me. It, it really is. Uh, Psalm 90 verse 10 tells us that the days of our lives are 70 years, or if by reason of strength, 80. I went to the CIA World Factbook and I, I was able to confirm that still the average lifetime uh, looking at the statistics nationally is 70 or 80 years. That's pretty much what we have. You know, we're running out of time. Let's continue this discussion tomorrow on tomorrow's update. We're going to have Doug back again and uh, we're going to continue talking about some of the content. We can't talk about it all because there's just too much there. You'll have to order the DVD, The Fall Feast of Israel and The Budding of the Fig Tree, to get all the info. Gary Stearman, along with Doug Hamp, visit us uh, again tomorrow. We'll be right back. And by the way, keep looking up.